women-led development. For promoting women-led development, the budget carries an allocation of more than 3 lakh crore for schemes benefiting women and girls. The signals, this signals our government's commitment for enhancing women's role in economic development. Pradhan Mantri Janjatiya Unnat Gram Abhiyan for improving the socio-economic condition of tribal communities we will launch the Pradhan Mantri Janjatiya Unnat Gram Abhiyan by adopting saturation coverage for tribal families in tribal majority villages and aspirational districts. This will cover 63,000 villages benefiting 5 crore tribal people. Bank branches in northeastern region more than 100 branches of India Post Payment Bank will be set up in the Northeast region to expand the banking services. This year, I have made a provision of 2.66 lakh crore rupees for rural development, including rural infrastructure. Priority four, manufacturing and services support for promotion of MSMEs. This budget provides special attention to MSMEs and manufacturing, particularly labor-intensive manufacturing. We have formulated a package covering financing, regulatory changes, and technology support for MSMEs to help them grow and also compete globally, as mentioned in the interim budget. I'm happy to announce the following specific measures. Credit guarantee scheme for MSMEs in the manufacturing sector. For facilitating term loans to MSMEs for purchase of machinery and equipment without collateral or third party guarantee, a credit guarantee scheme will be introduced. The scheme will operate on pooling of credit risks of such MSMEs. A separately constituted self-financing guarantee fund will provide to each applicant guarantee cover up to 100 crore rupees, while the loan amount may be larger. The borrower will have to provide an upfront guarantee fee and an annual guarantee fee on the reducing loan balance. New assessment model for MSME credit. Public sector banks will build their own in-house capability to assess MSMEs for credit instead of relying on external assessment. They will also take a lead in developing or getting developed a new credit assessment model based on the scoring of digital footprints of the MSMEs in the economy. This is expected to be a significant improvement over the traditional assessment of credit eligibility based only on asset or turnover criteria. That will also cover MSMEs without a formal accounting system. Credit support to MSMEs during stress period. I'm happy to announce a new mechanism for facilitating continuation of bank credit to MSMEs during their stress period. While being in special mention account, SMA account, SMA stage, for reasons beyond their control, MSMEs need credit to continue their business and to avoid getting into the NPA stage. Credit availability will be supported through a guarantee from a government promoted fund. Mudra loans. The limit of mudra loans will be enhanced to 20 lakh from the current 10 lakh for those entrepreneurs who have availed and successfully repaid previous loans under the Tarun category. Enhanced scope for mandatory onboarding in treads. For facilitating MSMEs to unlock their working capital by converting their trade receivables into cash, 
I propose to reduce the turnover threshold of buyers for mandatory onboarding on the TREADS platform from rupees 500 crore to 250 crore rupees. This measure will bring 22 more CPSCs and 7,000 more companies onto the platform. Medium enterprises will also be included in the scope of the suppliers. SIDBI branches in MSME clusters. SIDBI will open new branches to expand its reach to serve all major MSME clusters within three years and provide direct credit to them. With the opening of 24 such branches this year, the service coverage will expand to 168 out of 242 major clusters. MSME units for food irradiation, quality and safety testing. Financial support for setting up of 50 multi-product food irradiation units in the MSME sector will be provided. Setting up of 100 food quality and safety testing labs with NABL accreditation will be facilitated. E-commerce export hubs. To enable MSMEs and traditional artisans to sell their products in international markets, e-commerce export hubs will be set up in public-private partnership mode. These hubs under a seamless regulatory and logistic framework will facilitate trade and export-related services under one roof. Measures for promotion of manufacturing and services. Internship in top companies. As the fifth scheme under Prime Minister's package, our government will launch a comprehensive scheme for providing internship internship opportunities in 500 top companies to one crore youth in five years. They will gain, they will gain exposure for 12 months to real life business environment, varied professions and employment opportunities. An internship allowance of 5,000 per month, 5,000 rupees per month, along with a one-time assistance of 6,000 rupees will be provided. Companies will be expected to bear the training cost and 10% of their internship cost from their CSR funds. Industrial parks. Our government will facilitate development of investment ready plug and play industrial parks with complete infrastructure in or near 100 cities in partnership with the states and private sector by better using town planning schemes. 12 industrial parks under the National Industrial Corridor Development Program also will be sanctioned. Veggie paper, no? Please, wait here. Ah. Ah. Rental housing. Rental housing with dormitory type accommodation for industrial workers will be... Just one minute. Rental housing, I repeat. Rental housing with dormitory type accommodation for industrial workers will be facilitated in PPP mode with VGF support and commitment from anchor industries. Shipping industry, ownership, leasing and flagging reforms will be implemented to improve the share of Indian shipping industry and generate more employment. Critical mineral mission. We will set up a critical mineral machine, mission for domestic production, recycling of critical minerals and overseas acquisition of critical mineral assets. 
Its mandate will include technology development, skilled workforce, extended producer responsibility, uh, extended producer responsibility framework, and a suitable financing mechanism. Offshore mining of minerals. Our government will launch the auction of the first tranche of offshore blocks for mining, building on the exploration already carried out. Digital public infrastructure applications. Turning to the services sector, I propose development of DPI applications at population scale for productivity gains, business opportunities, and innovation by the private sector. These are planned in the areas of credit, e-commerce, education, health, law and justice, logistics, MSME service delivery, and urban governance. Integrated technology platform for IBC ecosystem. An integrated technology platform will be set up for improving the outcomes under the Insolvency Bankruptcy Code for achieving consistency, transparency, timely processing, and better oversight for all stakeholders. Voluntary closure of LLPs. The services of the Center for Processing Accelerated Corporate Exit, CPACE, will be extended for voluntary closure of LLPs to reduce the closure times. National Company Law Tribunals. The IBC has resolved more than 1,000 companies, resulting in direct recovery of 3.3 lakh crore to creditors. 3.3 lakh crore rupees to creditors. In addition, 28,000 cases involving over 10 lakh crore rupees have been disposed of even prior to admission. Appropriate changes to the IBC, reforms and strengthening of the tribunal and appellate tribunals will be initiated to speed up insolvency resolution. Additional tribunals will be established. Out of those, some will be notified to decide cases exclusively under the Companies Act. Debt recovery. Steps for reforming and strengthening debt recovery tribunals will be taken. Additional tribunals will be established to speed up recovery. Priority five, urban development. Cities as growth hubs, working with states, our government will facilitate development of cities as growth hubs. This will be achieved through economic and transit planning and orderly development of peri-urban areas utilizing town planning schemes. Creative redevelopment of cities. For creative brownfield redevelopment of existing cities with a transformative impact, our government will formulate a framework for enabling policies market-based mechanisms, and regulation. Transit-oriented development. Transit-oriented development plans for 14 large cities with a population above 30 lakh will be formulated, along with an implementation and financing strategy. Urban housing. Under the PM Avas Yojana, Urban 2.0, Housing needs of one crore urban poor and middle class families will be addressed with an investment of 10 lakh crore rupees. This will include the central assistance of 2.2 lakh crore rupees in the next five years. A provision of interest subsidy to facilitate loans at affordable rates is also envisaged. In addition, enabling policies and regulations for efficient and transparent rental housing, transparent rental housing markets with enhanced availability will also be put in place. Water supply and sanitation. In partnership with state uh, governments and multilateral development banks, we will promote water supply, sewage treatments, and solid waste management projects and services for 100 large cities 
through bankable projects. These projects will also envisage uses, use of treated water for irrigation and filling up of tanks in nearby areas. Street markets. Building on the success of PM Swanadi, PM Swanadi scheme in transforming the lives of street vendors, our government envisions a scheme to support each year over the next five years the development of 100 weekly huts or street food hubs in select cities. Stamp duty. We will encourage states which continue to charge high stamp duty to moderate the rates for all and, all, and also consider further lowering duties for properties purchased by women. This reform will be made an essential component of urban development schemes. Priority six, energy security, energy transition. In the interim budget, I had announced our strategy to sustain high and more resource efficient economic growth, along with the energy security in terms of availability, accessibility, and affordability. We will bring out a policy document on appropriate energy transition pathways that balances the imperatives of employment, growth, and environmental sustainability. PM Surya Ghar Muft Bijli Yojana. PM Surya Ghar Muft Bijli Yojana. In line with the announcement in the interim budget, in line with the announcement in the interim budget, PM Surya Ghar Muft Bijli Yojana has been launched to install rooftop solar plants to enable to enable one crore households obtain free electricity up to 300 units every month. The scheme has generated remarkable response with more than 1.28 crore registrations and 14 lakh applications, and we will further encourage it. Pumped storage policy. A policy for promoting pumped storage projects will be brought out for electricity storage and facilitating smooth integration of the growing share of renewable energy with its variable and intermittent nature in the overall energy mix. Research and development of small and modular nuclear reactors. Nuclear energy is expected to form a very significant part of the energy mix for Vikasit Bharat. Towards that pursuit, our government will partner with the private sector for, one, setting up Bharat small reactors, two, research and development of Bharat small modular reactor, and three, research and development of new, newer technologies for nuclear energy. The R&D funding announced in the interim budget will be made available for this sector also. Advanced, super, advanced ultra supercritical thermal power plants. The development of indigenous technology for advanced ultra supercritical thermal power plants with much higher efficiency has been completed. A joint venture between NTPC and BHEL will set up a full-scale 800 megawatt commercial plant using AUSC technology. The government will provide the required fiscal support. Moving forward, development of indigenous capacity for the production of high-grade steel and other advanced metallurgy materials for these plants will result in strong spin-off benefits for the economy. Roadmap for hard to abate industries. A roadmap for moving the hard to abate industries from energy efficiency targets to emission targets will be formulated. Appropriate 
regulations for transition of these industries from the current perform, achieve, and trade mode to Indian carbon market mode will be put in place. Support to traditional micro and small industries. An investment grade energy audit of traditional micro and small industries in 60 clusters, including brass and ceramic, will be facilitated. Financial support will be provided for shifting them to cleaner forms of energy and implementation of energy efficiency measures. The scheme will be replicated in another 100 clusters in the next phase. Priority seven, infrastructure investment by central government. Significant investment the central government has made over the years in building and improving infrastructure has had a strong multiplier effect on the economy. We will endeavor to maintain strong fiscal support for infrastructure over the next five years in conjunction with imperatives of other priorities and fiscal consolidation. This year, I have provided 11 lakh 11,111 crore rupees for capital expenditure. This would be 3.4% of our GDP. Infrastructure investment by state governments. We will encourage states to provide support of similar scale for infrastructure subject to their development priorities. A provision of 1.5 lakh crore rupees for long-term interest-free loans have been made this year also to support the states in their resource allocation. Private investment in infrastructure. Investment in infrastructure by private sector will be promoted through viability gap funding and enabling policies and regulations. A market-based financing framework will be brought out. Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. Phase four of the PMGSY will be launched to provide all weather connectivity to 25,000 rural habitations, which have become eligible in view of their population increase. Irrigation and flood mitigation. Bihar has frequently suffered from floods, many of them originating outside the country. Plans to build flood control structures in Nepal are yet to progress. Our government, through the accelerated irrigation benefit program and other sources, will provide financial support for projects with estimated cost of 11,500 crore rupees, such as the Kosi Michi Intrastate Link and 20 other ongoing and new schemes, including barrages, river pollution abatement, and irrigation projects. In addition, survey and investigation of COSI related flood mitigation and irrigation projects will be undertaken. Assam, Assam grapples with floods every year by the Brahmaputra River and its tributaries originating outside India. We will provide assistance to Assam for flood management and, and related projects. Himachal Pradesh suffered extensive losses due to floods last year. Our government will provide assistance to the state for reconstruction and rehabilitation through multilateral development assistance. Okay. Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand too, suffered losses due to cloudbursts and massive landslides. 
we will provide assistance to the state. Recently, Sikkim witnessed devastating flash floods and landslides that wreaked havoc across the state. Our government will provide assistance to the state. Tourism. Tourism has always been Tourism has always been a part of our civilization. Our efforts in positioning India as a global tourist destination will also create jobs, stimulate investments, and unlock economic opportunities for other sectors. In addition to the measures outlined in the interim budget, I propose the following measures. Vishnupad Temple at Gaya and Mahabodhi Temple at Bodh Gaya in Bihar are of immense spiritual significance. Comprehensive development of Vishnupad Temple Corridor and Mahabodhi Temple Corridor will be supported, modeled on the successful Kashi Vishwanath Temple Corridor to transform them into world-class pilgrim and tourist destinations. Rajgir. Rajgir holds immense religious significance for Hindus, Buddhists and Jains. The 20th Tirthankara Munisuvarata temple in the Jain complex, Jain temple complex is ancient. The Saptarishi or the seven hot springs form a warm water Brahmkund that is sacred. A comprehensive development initiative for Rajgir will be undertaken. Our government will support the development of Nalanda as a tourist center besides reviving Nalanda University to its glorious stature. Odisha's scenic beauty Odisha's scenic beauty, temples, monuments, craftsmanship, wild sa wildlife sanctuaries, natural landscapes, and pristine beaches make it an ultimate tourism destination. Our government will provide assistance for their development to Odisha as well. Priority eight, innovation, research and development. We will oper operationalize the Anusandan National Research Fund for basic research and prototype development. Further, we will set up a mechanism for spurring private sector driven research and innovation at commercial scale with a financing pool of one lakh crore rupees in line with the announcement in the interim budget. Space economy, with our continued emphasis on expanding the space economy by five times in the next 10 years, a venture capital fund of 1,000 crore rupees will be set up. Priority nine, next generation reforms. Economic policy framework. We will formulate an economic policy framework to delineate the overarching approach to economic development and set the scope of the next generation of reforms for facilitating employment opportunities and sustaining high growth. Our government will initiate and incentivize reforms for one, improving productivity of factors of production, and two, facilitating markets and sectors to become more efficient. These reforms will cover all factors of production, namely land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, and technology as an enabler of improving total factor productivity and bridging inequality. Effective implementation of several of these reforms requires collaboration between the center and the states and building consensus as development of the country lies in development of the states. For promoting competitive federalism and incentivizing states for faster implementation of reforms, I propose to earmark 
a significant part of the 50-year interest-free loan. Working with states, we will initiate the following reforms.